Hey y'all, it's Ashley. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I don't do these very often, but I thought that I would show you the books that I have acquired from the past, probably the past like four months, five months. And I want to reiterate that this isn't a book flex. It's just something that I really find interesting. I love checking out other people's book hauls just to kind of see what are on people's radar. Typically, I usually add most of the books that are on their haul on my TBR <laughs> on Goodreads. That's why I have over 600 books on my to be read list, but we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to do that. These are books that I have saved up and I've budgeted for. I was at a place not too long ago where I couldn't really afford to buy books. And so now that I am, I still use my library 80% of the time. And then the rest of the time, if I think, or if I've read some of the author's works, I will go ahead and collect those books. So this is kind of a, like a collection slash book haul, etc. Well, without further ado, let's get into this. One of the first books that I bought was the rest of Talia Hibbert's Brown Sisters series. So I got Get a Life Chloe Brown and then I got Actor H. E. Brown. Um, I already have Take a Hint Danny Brown up there. I love these books. They have the nice like little steamy scenes but also they have so much representation. For example, the first book in the series, the main character, she has chronic uh, chronic pain and then this one is the youngest sister and one of the characters is on the autism spectrum. The next book that I got is The Trial of Lizzie Borden by Kara Robertson. I'm very interested in true crime serial killers. Then I went ahead and I bought a copy of The Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. I read the whole series except for the last book which is Kingdom of Ash. I do plan on doing a reread, ergo why I bought a copy. Another book that's been on my radar is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This I believe is based off of Russian folklore. I've heard such good things about it. It's about a character and her siblings who like to hear about Russian fairy tales. I believe this is kind of like a magical scenario where the tales are true. Then I was walking through the bookstore and I found this one. Ted Bundy, Conversations with a Killer, and it is by McCod and Ainsworth. So this is based off of Adaption of the Network series. So my thinking was I've already seen the Netflix adaption and I don't need to read the book, but I'm gonna give it a try just for the sake of it. If you don't know, Ted Bundy was a notorious serial killer who is probably one of the most studied serial killers on the face of this planet. Very interesting stuff. And then another Ted Bundy book this is America's Most Evil Serial Killer by Al Cimino. I hope I said that right. Uh, essentially, this is just a, another person's point of view on, in research on what they did on the life of Ted Bundy and the crimes that he's committed during his lifetime. I have been waiting to get this book for so long, and for some reason, I just never did. But I got Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. It's about a young woman who is, I don't think she's possessed. Maybe she is possessed by a Mayan god. I think, yeah, it says this is a fairy tale inspired by Mexican folklore. So that's gonna be really interesting. I'm a really big fan of folklore. Then, thank you to Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter. I was gifted this for my birthday. She was so kind to send this to me. Thank you, Michelle, and happy birthday. We are birthday twins, so birthday twins gotta stick together. I am so excited for Getting in the Ninth by Tamsin Murr. I pretty much understand that this is about lesbian necromancers. We'll see how it goes. Another book that I came across during my shopping spree was Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I actually heard about this book from Erin from Booked and Busy. She really enjoyed it. It's a fantasy. I'm not really sure exactly what it's about. I, I know that it was very hyped up back in 2016. Then I proceeded to get The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. This is another one that's been on my TBR for the longest time and it's something that's kept my interest. 
From the moment Lucy met her husband's mother, she knew she wasn't the wife Diana had envisioned for her perfect son. Exquisitely polite, friendly, and always generous, Diana nonetheless kept Lucy at arm's length despite her desperate attempts to win her over. And because she was a pillar in the community, an advocate for female refugees, and a woman happily married for decades, no one had a bad word to say about Diana. Except Lucy. That was five years ago. Now Diana is dead. A suicide note found near her body claiming that she no longer wanted to live because of the cancer wreaking havoc inside her, but the autopsy finds no cancer. And this one is The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. I actually read this from NetGalley. This was one of my first arcs that I had ever read. A young adult fantasy about a young woman who is terrified to find out if she bleeds gold, which is the blood of God, or if she bleeds red, which means that she is just like your average everyday person. Unfortunately, she does bleed gold and therefore she is tormented and terrorized by the village until a mysterious woman comes to basically scoop her up and take her to this academy. I love this book. I'm so glad I finally have a copy and it's just gorgeous. This is one of the first books that I saw on Goodreads and I was like, I have to have this book. And then I read the synopsis and I was like, okay, but I have to have this book. Super great. I gave it a five out of five stars, but I will be having a reread just because I want to live through the nostalgia. It was such a fun read. And then I saw a couple people talking about this book and I thought, what the heck, might as well go for it. This is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland, and I'm going to read you the synopsis because, yeah. Iris Hollow and her two older sisters are unquestionably strange. As children, they disappeared on a Scottish city street only to return a month later with no memory of what had happened to them or where they'd been. More troubling, their appearance began to change. Their blue eyes now black, their dark hair now white, and as they grew older, odd, eerie occurrences seemed to fall in their wake. People find them disturbingly intoxicating, unbearably beautiful, and explicably dangerous. That's all I'm going to go into that. That's all I really want to know. I've seen a couple of people read this and heard good things about it, so I'm, I don't want to say this is a predictive five star, but it's it's on the verge. I just realized while trying to edit this video that, number one, the last bits of the video that I had filmed for this didn't film. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's just my life. It's chaotic. What can I say? Where I left off was The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. Listen, I'm about to butcher some names and it seems like every single time I say a name, I say it differently each and every time. So <laughs> I'm bound to get it right at some point, but I've searched it and I'm still saying it wrong, but I apologize. 18 year old Duanis Fontaine has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby Ojibwe reservation. She dreams of a fresh start at college, but when family tragedy strikes, Duanis puts her future on hold to look after her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, the charming new recruit on her brother Levi's hockey team. It continues to talk about how Duanis is sucked into this FBI investigation trying to figure out where this new drug is that's killing people and it talks about her going undercover to figure out who is distributing this, who is making it. But unfortunately, the police force is more interested in punishing the perpetrators rather than keeping the victims safe. And then this last book, I actually won in a giveaway from Steve Talks About Books, and that is Nocturne by H.B. Diaz. So this is a collection of short stories that are supposed to be really spooky and I'm ready to get, I'm, I'm ready to get scared. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up. Definitely consider subscribing and I will talk to you guys soon. See you later. Bye.